Hi, I'm Glenn Everett, Master of Machines. For this episode, it's technical time. And we're here at Powerhouse Engines in Warrigal, Victoria, Australia. And on the dyno here, we've got a little Aussie battler. This Holden 308 cubic inch V8. Now, originally General Motors Australia used the small block Chevy combination. Then moved to their own V8 design, specifically for Australia. They're a fantastic engine, did millions of miles on the roads of Australia, and also did very well on the racetrack too. They're a real trooper. You just couldn't kill them. Now, the customer's brief for this engine build was to have a really nice all-rounder. An engine that you could jump in the car, turn the key, have a nice lopy idle, drive anywhere you wanted to, no overheating issues, no reliability problems, just a really practical engine that makes somewhere in the 300 horsepower range. This engine here is a little bit unique though, and Powerhouse are hoping to achieve more with less. And when I say less, we're talking a standard early HQ cylinder head combination with no porting, other than a little bit of relief in the valve bowl area to complement a slightly larger valve set. It's got a mild camshaft grind, somewhere around the 220 at 50 thou, a custom powerhouse grind. And we're talking a torquer intake manifold here, a single plane, a four barrel holly carb, which in fact is 950, this dyno test carb. Sounds a bit big for an engine of this size, but I think you might be surprised the engine will use what it requires. A larger carb like this might be a little bit doughy on the street compared to something like a 650 or 750 that'll have more throttle response. But for dyno testing purposes today, this old workhorse here, this 950 dyno carb that's used in this room often, will work quite well. It's got a nice set of tri-wire extractors on it and an attractive looking stainless to emit those exhaust gases. It's got an Aeroflow electronic distributor. So let's delve a bit deeper and have a look at the specifications on this build. This little 308 engine is a perfect example of the next level engine blueprinting and assembly techniques that powerhouse engines are renowned for. The engine block has seen extensive testing prior to machining to ensure maximum structural integrity, followed by line honing of the crankshaft tunnels. The crankshaft also passed extensive scrutiny before being indexed round for correct stroke and accurate phasing, all kept in check with ARP main studs. The factory con rods were tested, resized and lengths corrected with the addition of ARP rod bolts. Pistons are flat top hyper-eutectic housing 20 thou oversized torque plate hone bores, bringing capacity to just under 311 cubic inches with a compression ratio equal to 10.7 to 1, maximising the owner's choice of 98 octane fuel. The rotating assembly is supported by ACL race series bearings and was precision balanced to the highest standards whilst complemented by a pro race harmonic balancer. The camshaft is a custom hydraulic flat tappet grind with 222 degrees duration at 50 thou on the inlet. Driven by a Rollmaster dual row timing set, chrome molly pushrods activate an LS1 lightweight rocker conversion kit of which includes a CHE bronze trunnion upgrade. The as-cast stock port early HQ cylinder heads house oversized valves that are controlled by a single heavy-duty valve spring topped by lightweight chrome molly retainers, all clamped to the cylinder block using ARP head bolts and sealed by Felpro head gaskets. Last but not least, the lubrication of this power plant is assisted by an Aeroflow high-volume baffled oil pan. So that gives you a bit of an idea on engine specs. Now it's time to fire this engine up for the first time and run the camshaft in a very critical part of any engine fire-up. This is a flat tappet camshaft. Unlike a roller camshaft, it's unforgiving when it comes to breaking it in and work hardening those lobes. It's important to run it between two and 3,000 RPM and cycle it under very light load. And do not drop below that. If you do, you can chop a load straight off the camshaft. It's very important to keep it lubricated and get those surfaces on that load super happy. Then it's time to shut it down, have a look around the engine, do a bolt check, check for any oil seepage or any issues, check the spark plugs, have a good look at their colours, see how everything's running, and then put it back together and fire it up and do some more runs. Basically what you want to do is do some bedding in. You want to use more load, you want to vary the RPM without revving it up too high, and then same thing, shut it down again to make sure everything's looking good. Then it's time to get into the serious stuff, making power.
what are you doing here, John? Uh, just checking the exhaust bolts, make sure none of them are coming loose. So after the initial break-in, just uh, go over everything and make sure everything's sweet before we start leaning on it. Pretty fat, but we've only been part throttling it, so. Happy with that, John? Yeah. 338 horsepower, and 330 foot pound of torque. So, what's the plan? What's the next plan? Uh, well, the fact that it's still the carb sitting on the manifold and it's quite low, um, we have a little bit of clearance for the bonnet in the car, so we'll try an inch spacer on it, uh, a couple of different types of inch spacers, and then we'll just put a two inch on it and see how, if it likes it or not. I, I really think the heads are probably well and truly maxed out, we're not going to find a lot, but. We'll see. That's pretty uh, pretty serious horsepower out of a, a, an early HQ cylinder head unported. That's that's impressive. Yeah, well, honestly, I thought 320 was going to pull this thing up, and it's uh, it's still going. How are we looking here? Yeah, about how, how I'd reckon it'd look on the Lambda, because we haven't um, done anything with uh, idle mixtures or anything like that. But yeah, sort of on the money, so. So there's a bit of a technique on the uh, on the plug, isn't there, when it comes to even seeing how much ignition timing is, is working for the engine, isn't there? Yeah. Explain that to us. Yeah, 100%. Um, so basically anything that's sort of running fairly good, uh, we'll find that this this red mark will get around um, around to the bend here. Yeah. Uh, a lot of the times, obviously every cylinder is different, so it's, it's, it's quite common to see like one cylinder um, having a the ground strap burnt to around about there, yeah. the next cylinder around to here. So basically you're going to be limited by the maximum amount of timing that uh, a cylinder can take. So, so this is about distribution in the intake manifold, isn't it? 100% and also, um, you know, reluctant wheel position. That's why obviously with EFI, uh, when you can time uh, cylinders individually, it can be quite a lot of horsepower to be gained because one cylinder might want 30 degrees of timing and the one next to it might want 34. Uh, well, you can't can't really do that with a conventional dizzy. So you've got to run an average, don't you? have got to run an average and you've got to keep it on the safe side. So, yeah. But generally, that's what i found. Like, there's, you know, the engines that run really good and are really efficient, they'll all look very similar to that on the plugs. So, yeah. <laughs> 344 horsepower and 339 foot pound of torque. I think it might have had the torque curve down here, but we'll just have a bit more. Yep. We'll overlay, overlay that. It's got that snow space, that carb space on it. Gee, that's impressive. So it's hurt it a little bit at 3,500 RPM. Yeah. Just a little dip there, but it keeps on trucking from there onwards, doesn't it? So what from here, John? Uh, any more ignition timing or? Yeah, I might just sneak another couple of degrees in it, and then uh, I might just try a uh, two-inch spacer on it. Like that's obviously responded quite well. So that's the spacer there, John. Yeah. So this is an Aeroflow pro product, and um, yeah, once again, these things go right too. Like uh, had yeah, a lot of a lot of success with these. So yeah, I've, heard, I've heard that that sort of where it comes to a point there on the inside, it it does help uh, create a bit of a stronger signal for the carb too yeah. potentially. Yeah. Look. Uh, a lot of the times, like big manifold things can be a little bit less responsive, but quite often I'll put something like this on and I can just instantly feel it on the throttle, like on the, in the dyno room there, like I just hit it and it's just like sharper, uh, even with the, you know, uh, bigger volume in there. So it's an it's increase um, in airspeed, isn't it? Yeah. Like, like a Venturi effect? That's it, that's it. Yeah, exactly what it is.
go, John. We've got games. Jeez. So, yeah. Um, 348 horsepower, 339 foot pound of torque. Gee, I tell you what, that's close to 350 horse, isn't it, yeah, John? Nice to be, I mean, it'd be nice to see that 350 number. <laughs> so what's the plan, John? That 348 horsepower seems to be max at the moment. What, what are you thinking uh, of doing? It's driving me nuts. Um, I am curious about what it takes to run this water pump uh, and also turn this alternator and this power steering. So we're just going to hook up the electric water pump and then just deaccessorise the front of this thing and just see whether it's worth anything. We'll go back to... Um, the jetting that made 348 with the with that open spacer. So when most of the time when you dyno an engine, you don't often run accessories on it, do nah, you? Nah, for a quick setup, it's just easy to um, do that. But because this is a bit different, where it's actually running a Gilma to turn a, um, a power steering pump, I wanted to make sure it was all going to stay on there and it wasn't going to go flying off and end in the car and then lose the water pump. So it's been it's been really good so far. So and just for the viewers, there is there is fluid in that pump. It's just circulating around. Isn't yeah, it? that's so, right. Yeah, yeah, we just done a loop hose on it. So Otherwise, you destroy it in no time. That's it. <laughs> that's sure. Well, this will be an interesting experiment. At the end yeah. of the day, uh, just to see what it achieves. Let's get it back to a standard dyno style format and see if we can make a few horsepower. Yeah. <laughs> 357 baby 357 horsepower all right 347.5 foot power torque johnny happy with that yeah well i wouldn't have thought there was that much in it to tell you the truth but there obviously is i suppose <laughs> we had that power steering pump turning with oil i know yeah. it's not driving or anything oh, but I think, I think it's more the water pump yeah Surely, yeah just turning that water like trying to pump that water around so the biggest drag but alternator i don't think there's nothing in it because it's not connected charging anything but yeah, anyway, we've definitely made 350, so well, we're not stuck at 348 no more. So and, we, and we haven't cheated because this is the way most of the engines are dynoed, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that's right, 100%. Like, we just wanted yeah. to set those Gilma drives up, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, that's right. So there you go, nearly 360 horsepower with stock HQ cast cylinder heads, boarding wise. With, with the, the medium-sized valve, yeah, the, yeah. Way, the 1850, the in-between yep. uh, valve, yeah. So John, 357 horsepower, got to be happy with that. So what's the next plan of attack? Okay, so now we're going to put um, the customer's uh, 650 Holly on it. It's uh, one of the brawler carbies. Um, they can be a little bit hit and miss those things I found over the, in the past. But anyway, we might have to uh, do a bit of internal mods to it to make it something half decent. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Well, it'll be interesting to see the comparison between the, uh, the big and the small carb, like a 950 versus 650. And this is not a, a big engine, but... You would hope that the 650 won't shut it down too much. We'll yeah. have to wait and see, I suppose. Yeah, time will tell. That's impressive in the little carb. That'll be an interesting overlay between the 950. Wow. Yeah, jetting's pretty much bang on, straight out of the box. So. That's great. So it's uh, seven horsepower down on the 950. But it just goes to show that you can't overcarb an engine if it wants to use the amount of air that it wants to use. But yeah, I, I can't really say the throttle response feels any better with this smaller carb than yeah. the big one. But um, anyway, let's overlay this. So yeah. Just, yeah, a little bit down all over, but still pretty, pretty good. It's pretty much there. It's a genuine 350 horse engine as it's going to go in the car. Exactly. So, Nick, you're the owner of this wonderful little 308. You must be absolutely ecstatic with the results you've seen today. Yeah, the boys have done a great job and um, surpassed what I thought I'd get, 350 horsepower. I was very surprised, uh, very surprised. 
um, but it's a good thing and it'll, it'll do the car justice. Yeah. So tell me about the car that it's going into. Uh, it's an 84 Group C replica. It was uh, originally a mild or promotional car that um, they were found in Queensland. Uh, brought it back and decided to bring it back to its former glory. So, here so, we it's, are. so it's actually a replica of Brock's Group C car. Correct. Gee, what a deserving car for a, a deserving engine. <laughs> yeah, she's going to be a bit of a beast, I think. Uh, she uh, should have some, some good legs and some, some fun drives in it. Yeah. Well, we better make sure we take a look at that machine in a future episode. Absolutely. For more information on Powerhouse Engines, head to powerhouseengines.com.au or see the link in the description. And be sure to subscribe to our channel as we have a lot more epic engine builds coming your way.